Hello and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going back over to my neighbour Tracy's house and we are going to share with you a recipe for a chocolate cake that I think you'll absolutely love. I'm going to head over there now and I'll see you there. So Tracy, it's so nice to be back here in your kitchen. It's been a while since I've been here. It has been, and I'm really excited to be doing another video with you. And Me welcome too. welcome everybody to our kitchen again. It's a beautiful day in Edinburgh, and we just thought, what a perfect day for us to make this absolutely luscious cake. And by the way, you're looking really glamorous today. Well, thank you. So are you. But I'm Thanks. a little worried about you wearing total oh. ensemble of white and cream oh. and working with chocolate. I know, but you know, I've always liked to live on the edge, so whatever happens, happens. I've heard that about you, Nick. <laughs> Today, we're going to be making an absolutely delicious chocolate and walnut cake. And I guarantee you are going to absolutely adore this cake. It is so moist, it is so chocolatey, and everybody that we've served it to absolutely Loved it. Adored it. And we just ran out way too quickly. And the thing about this cake is we don't usually like chocolate cakes because they can be really dry, but we really loved this one because it's so moist. It was very unusual that we were both craving. Mm. I mean, I'm not even a chocolate person Neither am I. So I was so amazed and delighted yeah. at how well it tasted. It was just fabulous. Yeah, it really was. Very special. Right then, shall we get started? Let's do. We have 300 grams of granulated sugar, 110 grams of brown sugar, 70 grams of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, three quarter teaspoon of salt, 235 mils of boiling water, 175 mils of vegetable oil, 56 grams of unsalted butter, two large eggs, three egg whites, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, 256 grams of all-purpose flour, 116 grams of sour cream, and 80 mils of milk. Right, so to start, we're gonna mix all the dry ingredients except the flour together. Mm -hmm. So let's get going and do that. We've got okay. our granulated sugar, our brown, brown sugar, sugar, baking soda, and salt. salt. Perfect. Good. And I'm going to whisk these together. Now we're going to pour in a cup of boiling water, mix that all together, and then that is going to cool for five minutes before we go on to our next step. So now we're going to blend together the oil and the butter and today we found out the reason why this cake is so moist. It's so ironic because I was reading this article yesterday and it was very informative in explaining that when you use oil uh, it is 100% fat and so you get this very moist, rich, luxurious cake. When you use butter it's an emulsion and only 80% of it is fat and the rest is water and milk solids. So you tend to get a drier cake when you do use butter than using oil. And we think this is one of the reasons why this cake is so great. I have used oil before in cakes, but there was just something that was really extraordinary about this one. We blend together the oil and the butter. Right, let's whiz it down. And now we're going to blend together both the eggs and the egg whites with the vanilla essence and then blend all that together. Right, off we go. Looking good. So now we're going to add the flour and Mix that together until just combined. We don't want to over mix. So 
next step is we're going to blend in the milk and the sour cream. And again, don't over mix, just combine. <laughs> and the final step is to blend in the cocoa mixture with all of this. And then we can whiz it all together and you'll have a, your batter. A little spill, not too worried. So we're just about ready to pour the batter into the tins, but we have prepared the tins first. So we took the cake pans, we buttered them, cut out a ring of parchment paper, and then also buttered that. So you really want to be well covered so the cake doesn't stick and comes out nicely. And then there was this lovely trick that Nick taught me that I had never seen before. I've been baking since I was 10 years old, and yet I had never heard of this tying um, fabric around the pan, and Nick's gonna tell you why that works. So science was never really my strong point at school, but apparently when you tie a wet rag around the outside of the tin, the coolness of that and the heat inside just helps the cake to rise level, and it really does work. I was astounded. It was absolutely flat. So, let's do. Okay. So we're ready to put these in the oven. Just a couple more things. I'm going to give them a good smack on the counter to get out any bubbles, make sure there's no air. Then I'm going to put them in the oven. They're going to bake at 350 degrees in a preheated oven for 29 to 34 minutes, at which time you use the old fashioned toothpick trick unless you have a cake tester. You stick that into the cake, as you probably know, and if it comes out clean, they're ready. And also what we do is, halfway through baking time, we switch them around. So we put the bottom one on the top and the top one on the bottom. So shall we bake them? Let's do! So as you can see, the cakes have come out of the oven very successfully. They yes. sat in their tins for five minutes before we remove them. And they're perfect, and now they're going to cool completely and then we will frost them. But in the meantime, we're going to make the frosting and you can see how incredible it is. The texture is amazing and the flavor will literally knock your socks off. You'll need 480 grams of powdered sugar, 70 grams of cocoa powder, 113 grams of salted butter, 226 grams of unsalted butter, 3 to 4 tablespoons of heavy cream, and 1 and a half tablespoons of vanilla extract. Okay, so we're going to begin by adding the salted and the unsalted butter into here and whipping it for about five to eight minutes. Do you want to tell us why we have salted and unsalted butter? Well, the reason that we have both is that when you use just salted butter, you really can't control the amount of salt in the butter because every person mm. every, or every company that makes butter uses a different amount of salt. So there's no real way to tell how much they're being used. So by doing the majority of the butter in unsalted and then the smaller quantity in salted, we're still getting the salt that we need without overdoing it. Let's put the unsalted and the salted butters together and whip them. Okay. For about five to eight minutes again until they're white, creamy and, and fluffy. fluffy. As you can see, the butter is white, pale and fluffy, and now we're going to add in the cocoa powder, the icing sugar, the cream and the vanilla essence. Absolutely correct. Here we go with the cocoa. It was suggested that we sift this, but we didn't do it last time and it came out flawed. We want to make life easy. Okay, so now we're going to add in the icing sugar. Absolutely. Or powdered sugar for you American <laughs> viewers. Alrighty, oops, I missed. We've got two more steps to go um, before we actually frost the cake and making the frosting. So we're going to add, this is four tablespoons of cream, we're going to add about three of them, mm -hmm. and, um, and then the vanilla, 
and we're going to see the consistency. If we need a little more cream, then we'll add a little more. Yeah. Let's whiz it up. So we are going to go ahead and add this last little bit of cream. We want it to be extra glossy. We do. Mmm, looks divine. I know, you just want to dive right in, don't you? Yes. All right. So for extra fluffiness, you can whip this for an extra three to four minutes and it will really make it that much more glossy and perfect. So we'll do that. Because fluffiness is our middle name. Oh yeah, and nuts. And nuts, yes. <laughs> we have a whole bit on nuts too. As you fluffiness, can nuts. Yes. Champagne. Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> and have too many nuts, too much champagne, or to be too fluffy. Nope. Is done. It's beautiful, smooth, and silky. So we're going to go ahead and frost the cake. Just remember, before you frost the cake, it has to be completely cool because yes. you don't want the frosting to melt because you lose that whole wonderful lushness. So it's all done. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure you'll agree. Voila. Yes. And this really is a beautiful decadent chocolate cake and I really think that you'll all love it. So thank you again for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Absolutely. Thank you so much for tuning in again and please come back. We love doing this and we love doing this for you. Bye bye. See you next time. A few of you may have noticed that there are some continuity issues with our video and in the spirit of honesty we thought that we would tell you what happened. Yes, uh, we were filming and Nick's camera died and we didn't realize it so we kept doing what we thought was filming but it wasn't. So we've had to go back today. 24 hours later. Yes, and try and recreate the scenes that were missing but we wanted you to know that yes we do make mistakes and we're not perfect and, and also my beard doesn't grow in an hour <laughs> <laughs> please forgive us for this not being flawless today but um hopefully you still our, enjoyed it yeah and you're our friends and we want you to know that this is who we are <laughs>